in your home. I want you just to put your hands together in your home and clap for Jesus. And if you are bold, you can just shout his name and call the name of Jesus. Let the, let the atmosphere of your house know that Jesus has entered. Amen. This is Jesus stepping into your home. Hallelujah. I want you to know that the same atmosphere of his presence that is here is being it's going through the airwave. It's going through the sound. It's going to your phone. It's going to your iPad. It's going to your screen. And Jesus is entering your house in the name of Jesus. One thing I want you to know that wherever he is, there's security. Wherever he is, there's protection. So as he always says, he says, fear not. Amen. For I will be with you. God is with you. Glory to be to your holy name. Let's cry for Jesus one more time. Thank you, choir for that wonderful time of worship in Jesus name hallelujah our God reigns our God reigns hallelujah Philippians chapter 2 verse 10 Philippians chapter 2 verse 10 Bible says that at the name of Jesus that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and the things under the earth. In some translation, it says, at a, at a mention of the name of Jesus, every knee obeys. They are in obedience. Amen? When it says every knee bows, it means that whatever it is, it, it submits to the name of Jesus. Sickness submits to the name of Jesus. Whatever they are being called, whatever disease, whatever plague, they, they, they obey Jesus. Death obeys him. That's what it means that at the mention of the name of Jesus, wherever they are in the heavens, they obey Jesus. On the earth, they obey Jesus. Beneath the ground, they obey Jesus. What a wonderful name. What a wonderful name. Just say that sickness obeys the name of Jesus. That's one thing you need to know. Jesus is the answer. Hallelujah. When men have tried all they know to do, when plague is resisting and things are saying no, when Jesus speaks, they obey. That's why the centurion man told Jesus, said, you don't need to come to my house. Just speak a word. He said, I'm a man of authority. When I speak to my servants, they obey me, and I know that you are the one that have authority both in the heavens, and you have authority on the earth, you have authority in the, under the earth. Who, whatever you say, they must obey. He understood that sickness, death obeys the voice of Jesus. Then Jesus said, wow, what a wonderful, what, what a wonderful revelation. And he spoke, and the servant was healed instantly. Which means Jesus didn't go there just by spoken word. As, we, as we're speaking the word of God right now, Philippians 2.10, this word is being fulfilled in your home. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, whatever it is, fear obeys the name of Jesus. When you call the name of Jesus, fear checks out. Suddenly faith comes. Whatever is in your environment, whatever is moving in your city that you, you disagree with, like the rage that is going on all over the world. We are here to say no to coronavirus. Hallelujah. As many that believe that at the name, mention of the name of Jesus, every knee, if that disease or that plague is among every knee, he must bow. Hallelujah. He must what? He must bow. Let's go to Acts 27 from 22. Acts 27 from 22. Acts 27 from 22. Acts 27, 22. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. It's a complete declaration. This is a man, at this point in time, there was storm everywhere. The ship was, was going through turbulence. And everyone was afraid. Oh, they were going to die. Death had come. 
And he told them with assurance, he said, be calm. As I speak to someone today, I speak to the nations of the world. Right now, peace be still. I said, peace be still. He exhorted them. He encouraged them. He told them, yes, I'm aware that things are happening. But be encouraged. Don't be down. He said, be a good share. He says, rejoice. That's what he means. Be at peace. Be still. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the sheep. Hallelujah. But of the sheep. As many that were connected to Paul, as many that were in his environment, he said, nothing will happen to you. Some bags might be thrown away. Some sheep might shake a little. Amen. But your life will be preserved. Let's, let's look at the next verse. Verse 20, 23. It says, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, who I am and whom I serve. The next verse. Saying, fear not. Hallelujah. I'm standing here tonight to speak to you. Fear not. In the name of Jesus. Say, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God had given thee all them that sail with thee. All Paul had was a word of assurance from God. God told him, I have a plan for your life. You are going to go somewhere. Because you have a destiny, you have somewhere you are going to. Nothing can cut you short. I assure you, God has a plan, has a purpose for your life. You are not here by accident. No, no plague will come to cancel the agenda of God for your life. Be rest assured that he that started this good work in you is able to be with you to the very end. Hallelujah. Be sure that my life is hidden in Christ Jesus. That God has given me visions, given me dreams. They must come to pass. Therefore, I cannot die before my time. He has showed him that you have a plan for you. You are going somewhere. Therefore, be at peace. Hallelujah. The next verse. It says, 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good share, for I believe God. The key is that you must believe what God says. The Bible says, he that cometh to me must believe. That he is and is a reward of them that diligently seek him. The key is that you must trust God. You must dare to believe God. Believe him by his word. If God has spoken, he will bring it to pass. A thousand shall fall by the right, ten thousand by, by your left. But they shall not come near thee. He said, only with your eyes will you behold. Yes, you might be seeing dead bodies on the screen. You might be watching the news and getting reports. No problem, but there's a word of anchor. Of safety. Amen. For those that are in Christ Jesus. Glory to, glory to God. He said, I believe God. You need to believe God. I is able to do. Exceedingly abundantly. Above what he has spoken to you. That is the God whom we serve. That it shall be even as he was told me. Glory to God. I'm trusting someone will hold the word of God today. And say, as Mary said, when the angel visited her, told her something, of something that was impossible. She said, be it unto me according to thy word. Hallelujah. No matter the storm, no matter what is going on, I speak to you one more time. Peace, be still. Say to yourself, peace, be still. Say to yourself in your home, tell your children, Tell your, everyone around you, point to them and tell to them, peace be still. Hallelujah. Say, peace be still. The Lord is on the throne. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 4, 39. Mark 4, 39. And after Paul made, made that declaration, it looked as if they were going to die, but somehow they, they made it. He looked as if the sheep was going to, everyone was going to lose their life. Mm. When God speaks, he confirms his word. Mark 4, 
39. And he arose. Storm is not new to Jesus. The God whom himself storms is not new to them, to him. Fear of death is not new. Many times lives have been threatened. But for every time when he assures them, he keeps to his word. He said, and he arose and rebuked the wind. In this same instance, there was a storm that was blowing. And everybody was afraid. They came to Jesus, still sleeping, under, and because the ship was already full of water. And the next one, the ship was to sink. Say, ah, ah, what's wrong with you? We're about to die. And you're not doing anything. And the Bible said, he arose and he built the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. At the name of Jesus, every storm that is Blowing around in your neighborhood, blowing in your city, blowing in your nation. I speak to them, peace be still. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And the wind ceased. Hallelujah. The wind obeyed. And there was great calm. I decree very soon, very soon, all this noise will be calm. I said, it will be calm. And I speak to COVID-19. Hallelujah. All they call you coronavirus. Peace be still. In the name of Jesus. Let your activities come to an end. In the name of Jesus. Let someone shout a big hallelujah. The next verse, it says, And he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that, that, that ye have no faith? Next verse. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? When we talk about Jesus at times like this, we're not talking of, we're not talking of an ordinary person. We're talking of the one that came into the world as light in the beginning. And darkness moved back. See, the light shined in darkness and darkness could not comprehend it. When God comes in, darkness must go. That I assure you. They say, what manner of man is this? That even the wind, the storms, the sea, the sickness, obey him. Death obeys him. Affliction obeys him. Many people are afraid, oh, lockdown, what will they eat? How will they survive? God is the answer. He will turn everything around and you, it will be like a dream. Glory to God. The same way they've been announcing, oh, death is going on. Suddenly you, you hear, death has stopped. Hallelujah. As they're announcing that, ah, they're closing borders, closing cities. Very soon you will hear, the cities are reopening. Hallelujah. The same street that they were showing that it was desolate, being a desert. Very soon I assure you, they will show back those cities and life will be back. Hallelujah. Because our God is called the resurrection and the life. It doesn't matter if things had gone bad. Things have gone dead. He's able to bring back to life. Back to life. I speak to every city, every nation that looks as if things is dying, as if things are collapsing. I decree, back to life. I say back to life. Back to life. In the name of Jesus. Why am I so sure? Because he says, the wind. The wind is the unseen hand behind the storm. The wind is not visible. But you can see the waters splashing. He's now saying, what is behind the course? 
What is fueling the, the trouble? Even though you cannot see it, but they can obey me. They can hear me and they will obey. The power behind this rage and this storm, the power of death. I hope you know that sickness is a messenger of death. So when you hear plague, the one behind the plague, his name is death. It's the one showing up. And I want to let you know that Jesus, when he went to the grave, he went to make a public show of death and hell. He took the keys away from him. Therefore, death has no power over your life and my life. The one that rules, the one that has a key, his name is called Jesus. Now the Bible says he has the key of David to open and to lock. I decree every door of death that has been opened to any life in your family, in your city, that door is closed in the name of Jesus. I hope you know some people right now, they are afraid because they've tested them positive and they are saying very soon they will die. But I'm here to announce in the name of Jesus, those that have been tested positive will begin to be tested negative. Amen? Amen. As many have been appointed, some they've said, go and be in your house. No medication. Just be there. Very soon, they will rise up from their, from their room. Their lungs will be clear. Amen? Those that could not walk will begin to walk. Then they will come and they will test them again. And they will not be positive. Because there's a balm in Gilead. There's a healer in the land. Now is a time for Christians to boast. Amen? To boast in the God whom they serve. When the medical system has failed, hospitals can tell you, please, you are sick. Yes, about that, but you can't enter. They can tell you, oh, please go back. But I have a healer that never turns anyone back. I have a healer. His, his hand is big enough to take everyone that comes to him. Anyone that comes to him, he will, he, he, he will welcome you. Amen? No one goes to him and he turns them back. Is a passionate God, a heart of love. He cannot turn his back at his own. Bible says, if, even if he has a hundred sheep and one gets missing, he will leave the ninety and chase after that single one because every life is precious to him. That's why I'm speaking to you in your home right now. You are so precious to the Lord. You are so precious. He loves you mightily and he's ready to put his blood as a mark upon your life. He's ready to put his blood as a mark upon your doorstep. He's ready to stand and, and, and be and stand between you and death. And tell death you can't enter. And tell sickness you cannot touch this one. Why? Because he or she belongs to me. I want to encourage you as you're in your house right now, if your relationship with Jesus Christ has not been as how he ought to be, if you're not being, you know, your fellowship with him has not been as it used to be. That means you need to, this is a wake-up call. That every nation, every man, no matter how successful you have been, you need Jesus. I want you to, to talk to him. The Lord, I'm, uh, today I come back home. I, I, I'm, I reconnect myself with you. I want, to be, I want to fellowship with you like I used to. I want to begin to pray and study the word and seek you like the time of my first love. How, give me a second chance. And if you are there and you have never had an experience with Jesus Christ, Jesus is, he, he, he's, he, he's so sweet. He, his peace. If you have never experienced his peace, come and taste and see. You will know that, wow, there's so much in him. He's a comforter. He's a helper. He's a teacher. He's a friend. If you have never responded your life to Jesus Christ, this is the hour. In your home, it's very simple. Bible says he's knocking on the door right now. That's why you're watching this, this service. Just tell the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus, 
forgive me of my sins. Have mercy on me. Come into my life. Come and be my Lord and my Savior. I surrender all to you. Take my fear away and give me peace. I want to begin to worship you. I want to enjoy serving you. I confess that you came and you died for me. And on the third day you rose again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I want to assure you that if you pray that short prayer, your name has been written in the book of life. And there's a new beginning for you. And I want to raise a word of of prayer for you. That everyone that just prayed that prayer right now, you have an encounter with the Lord yourself. A personal encounter. Jesus will reveal himself personally to you. I I pray that your walk with the Lord will be a, a sweet experience. He will reveal himself in an unusual way to you. The Lord himself will strengthen you in the name of Jesus. From this day going forward, you will taste of his goodness. This peace will reign in your life. And every storm that you have been going through shall experience peace. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. The Bible says, if they will humble themselves and pray, I will hear and I will heal their land. I want you to pray this prayer. I will say, Father. Say, Father. Arise in your power. Arise in your glory. And calm every raging storm of coronavirus. In Nigeria. In America. In Italy. In Spain. In Asia. In China. Every nation. Every city where this plague is raging, Father, appear in your power and silence it in the name of Jesus. You are the great healer. You are the great healer. My Lakibo Shaka. Every man, every woman that has been affected, infected with this virus, I command the healing power of God to touch them in the name of Jesus everyone in the hospitals that they have given up hope that they have left them that they have said they have not found the cure oh lord your blood your blood your blood is enough the blood of jesus is enough let the blood of jesus speak upon their lives speak upon our lives in the name of jesus father put an end to this storm put an end to this raging storm silence this demon Silence the spirit of death. Silence the power of grave that is hovering upon the land in the name of Jesus. 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 There are, there are announcements on a daily basis that more people have been affected. I want us to cover every one of us in the blood of Jesus. The Bible says when he comes, When he sees the blood, he will pass over. Let the blood cover us and cover our loved ones and cover those that are not yet affected now so that when the plague comes and sees them, the blood will speak. The blood will speak. The blood will say, touch not the anointed and do them no harm. Let me to pray in Nigeria, in Lagos, in Abuja, in all the cities in Portacol, in all the cities in Nigeria, West Africa, South Africa, all over Africa, all over Europe, all over America, in any nation where you are, in Australia, in China, wherever, in Hong Kong, begin to pray. Lord, we cover, we cover men and women, the old, the young, with the blood of Jesus, with the blood of Jesus. Let the blood stand as an immunity from the power of this disease. Lord, cover us, O Lord, with your blood. Let your blood be a wall of fire around us to defend us, to keep us from every evil. In the name of Jesus. Father, we call your name because we know you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we ask or think. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We want to pray that every door that has opened for this virus, let the door be shut. Hallelujah. When a door opens, it gives it access. Whatever medium that the enemy had planned to use to spread it further, either people going to the beach and saying, oh, there's none like, there's none like, there's no virus anywhere. Ignorance is a door. Every man, every woman, every city, every government that is still in ignorance, that is not ready, is a door to, to, to afflict people. Let that door shut. Amen? When that door closes, that means they, suddenly they wake up. Every government, every institution that is still lapsing, that is not taking it seriously, let that door shut. Say, Father, every open door to this plague in any institution, in any city, in any country, every door by which this didn't want to spread, we come at the door. Be shot, be shot, be shot, be shot in the name of Jesus. Hey, Kalabakala, we have the key of David to open the door that no man can shut, and we can shut doors and no man can open. Let's shut the door against coronavirus. You will go, you will afflict us no more. You will enter no, no more into any city. You will enter no more. Kalabalagada. Let's cut him off. Cut him off. Matalagadia. Metalagala. Letolabalia. Rekete. Letelegadia. Mantalagadia. Rekete Bosch. Matalaganagadi Burokoto. Every mata, every door open to you. Be shot in the name of Jesus. 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 Matalagadagada. Le telebosh kalaba. Le katibroto soto legedia. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Another thing that we know about this deadly virus is that it needs to be in contact with people. So which means that it's a disease that is strengthened by contact. Amen. If it if he loses contact, he dies. Glory to God. That's what Bible says, touch not. When it can't touch, it can't affect. What it cannot touch, what it cannot touch, it cannot kill. What it cannot touch, it cannot enter. Hallelujah. We want to pray that every connection that this disease has with any man, let it be, let that connection break. Amen. Let it break. Every access, every communication that he has through human beings, through people, any form of communication, any form of association, let it be cut off. Say, Father, say, Father, every association, every contact, every connection of the spread of this virus, let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it break his chain. Let it break his chain of spread. Break his chain. Command the chain to break. Command the chain to break. If he loses contact, he, he dies on himself. Let his contact be broken. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere that it is going to afflict anyone, let, it, let his contact break. Everywhere his, con his communication, let his communication be broken. In the name of Jesus. We command, touch not any man anymore. We bind you in the name of Jesus. We decree, let your contact be broken. Be broken. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. He says, if they humble themselves to pray, that's what we're praying. We're, this, we're humbling ourselves. Do you know what it means to humble? It means to, to submit. To humble. Some people will look at you and say, are you educated? They will say, are you educated? And you are praying and you are saying that it should not touch. And you are, is it prayer? Hallelujah. They they stay in prayer and think science is superior. But when the noble, the wise, put science at the side, say, yes, we know science are doing their work, but there's still a God. There's still a God that makes the foolish things of this world to confirm the wise. We know we're not wise. There, some are wise, but we might be foolish inside of men. But we, we submit, we humble ourselves. Hallelujah. 
We humble ourselves to pray. We humble ourselves to what? To pray. Say, when you humble yourself and you seek after him, he will hear, he will hear. And he will, do, he will heal the land. He will heal the land. He will heal the land. A virus can be used to heal someone. A drug can be given. But not yet any drug to heal the land. If a land is affected, it's only God that can heal the land. Only God. Medicine can heal men, can heal the land. You can't put vaccine in the land. You can't vaccine the soil. You can't vaccine the environment. It's only God. Only God. Right now, you say, Father. Say, Father. Every land, every city under this siege of coronavirus, we command, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Command healing over Nigeria. Command healing over every land, every city where they are losing their loved ones to this sickness. Father, let the healing the power of God come down and heal every land. Heal every land. Heal every land. Heal the land. Kalaba shekele brakalosh. Tante le brakalosh kele bosh. He kalagana gabasanda. Re tele baliagalagana. Ze tele bosh. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Let me to bless the name of the Lord. Knowing that he, whenever we call on his name, he hears and he answers. He's our answer. Lord, we thank you. For when we get together, I will pray. Pray of agreement. You hear and you answer. Thank you for healing the land. Thank you, Lord, for putting an end to this plague in the land. Thank you for closing the door against the spread. Thank you for cutting off all his contacts, all his connections. Thank you, Lord, for bringing peace. Thank you for restoring our economies. Thank you, Lord, for restoring all that we have lost. Those that have lost their jobs, lost finances, lost values of their shares, lost, lost businesses. Father, Lord, restore, restore, restore. Thank you for restoring. Thank you, Father, for giving us the victory. Thank you, Lord. For we know the same way we, we are standing before you today and seeking your face. Very soon we are coming back with thanksgiving to sing songs to you for putting an end to coronavirus all over the world. And so shall it be. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 